Okay, so it's the next morning and they have a final count of all the boats that were hit. It's a lot of lightning, a lot of lightning. Leave five. Alchemy, go ahead. I think we have six, although I may be wrong. Over. Do you have boat names, Alchemy? I do not. Oh, we were just counting them and I was making a post on Facebook about it to my friends back in Canada. Okay, so it's the next morning and they have a final count of all the boats that were hit. Seven. So far, seven boats were hit by lightning in the Georgetown Harbor here. Um, Although it's likely that there's more because if you were hit by lightning, you probably aren't able to report it um, due to the fact that you don't have a radio, right? Because that doesn't work and not everyone um, had a way to protect their electronics that got hit. So um, I feel lucky. I, I really didn't understand the severity of the situation when it was happening, but <laughs> of course, I never do. But uh, what, a, what a tough situation to be in. Um, especially if your boat is really more dependent on electronics like this boat right here. If we were to get struck by lightning in a far away place like this, it would be extremely difficult um, to get everything uh, up and running and, and get all the parts set in to, to, to get back to the States. Um, really, really glad that I avoided that. Um, I would like to know more about the science of um, uh, of a lightning strikes and, and ways to kind of prevent those. Um, how much, like how likely, if you are running more systems, are you more likely to get hit? And then if you're just not running any systems or what, what percentage does that actually change your chances of getting hit by lightning if you are running electrical current or not? I've been told that the, the magnetic, uh, the electromagnetic pulse that gets sent out if, if we would lack of better words um, of the VHF can attract lightning, but I wonder if like running generators and things like that has the same likelihood of attracting it, or if it's just those radio signals out that has a greater chance of, but we'll have to look at it. We'll have to look at all the, I'm definitely thinking about that now, um, all the ways that, that you can really help, because it would be devastating if it, you got struck by lightning in a faraway place. Where are we going? We go to the sandbar. We got ditched by everyone. Is it high tide or low tide? Uh, it's supposed to be low tide this evening, so I'm sure it's low ish. So it's tide. getting lower. Yeah. That'll be good. You gotta put your hand on the top, honey. The power, yeah, like that, on that. No, wait, wait, wait. Just let him do his thing. I want him to get knocked over. He's not going to get knocked over. The wave comes in. He'll be like, oh,
Look at that, look at it. It's like a horror movie inside, look at that. I had no idea. That is crazy. Gorgeous. Ah! <laughs> that is amazing. Hey, what about your hat? Well, get my hat and put it in the dinghy. I'm not your little I'm master. Swimming, and you're just standing there. Don't give me what? I'm gonna get you wet, hot. No, you give me what? You're gonna be in big trouble. Don't. It's Jack Skelly. Brooke, the rock lady's up here. What do you see? Where? Uh oh. What? That's my bra! <laughs> did, you, did you make that? <laughs> no, that was the very end of the hike. You found it. What'd you the find? What'd you find? Ooh, his shoe. Why are we filming this? This is boring. We've come to. We have no drama, so this is the drama. Hey, let's actually put it in the top. Leo, you got lucky. We had to come back to the hike because Leo left his shoe. It's almost as dramatic as um, our friends losing their dinghy. Yeah, yeah, we, we had to cut it loose. He was dragging us down. I feel like I didn't even notice this yesterday. Can I put the Crocs on? Oh, well, that's cool. Can someone spray paint their Crocs? I don't know. This is this is why you don't pick up a mooring in a country that you don't trust the mooring. Look at that shackle on there. It's a big shackle. See, it's not definitely not a boat boat part. It's a mooring. Check that out. Is it? Oh, it's plastic. Oh, maybe it's for fishing. It might be fishing because this is plastic. So it's not. It wouldn't be for a boat. It's for fishing. It's a fishing crew. But you can look that up. We just got done with a really fun, busy day. We did a couple hikes. We played at a sandbar. Leo, I think I have some clips to show you, is covered in sand. We needed this good day after recovery from the last two nights of just kind of crazy weather, which we've explained in the episode. What is Captain barking on? He's freaking out out there. Brandon's downstairs making crepes. We all had showers. It was a good day. It was a nice day. 
And I, I haven't had my big cameras for these like excursions, but I have had my phone, so I'll kind of input some of the clips of what we've been doing. But yeah, cheers. Elon Musk. <laughs> We just saw a SpaceX launch. That was so cool, right, Rue? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so neat. So we'll show you the footage and some stills, maybe. Went right over our beach in Exuma, in Bahamas, in Georgetown. Mama. What? Mama. Did you see a spaceship? Yeah. Oh, that was so cool. Okay, so here's the deal. This is uh, what... Um, Malcolm is calling Operation Skyhook going on here. His uh, dinghy, Davit, um, started smoking right before he got the, the dinghy on the deck. Um, and luckily he got it down onto the deck. So um, um, his motor burned out and he doesn't have a spare motor. And every single time he tries to use the motor at all, it just flips the breaker uh, and blows a blade fuse. So. Um, he could just replace blade fuses and hope, but the reality is, is that like the motor is, it, it's done and um, it, there's a reason that the blade fuses are popping and um, he doesn't feel comfortable, which is a smart idea not to get the tender off the deck, but we got another solution. So this bigger boat, which has a 2,500 pound davit, um, they're going to lift it off. Uh, I would lift it off, but I don't know if you have seen footage of me lifting the tender off my tender off my deck. Uh, my tender is a little bit heavier, but the boat lists over a decent amount. And I'm worried that if I tried to do it and I tried to extend the boom all the way over to grab his and pull it over and we did it at anchor, I'm concerned that the two pilot houses would end up hitting or something higher up than the rub rail where the fender. It's, it probably wouldn't happen, but the stability issue of the boat healing over um, it worries me. So I think the safer way to do it is to do this larger bow that doesn't have really a list at all when it um, when it pulls the tender. And the the davit is much more capable with uh, at least about a thousand pounds more capability than mine. So this is a pretty small thingy. It should be just fine. You're ready. Okay, ready that, that's gonna cut the wire. That's gonna cut the. Give me the briefing. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drive from the uh, the wing station over there. Yeah. I know. And then uh, so we're gonna pull up to uh, us facing his starboard side, our starboard side. I got, I got. Us facing aft. Yeah. Place. And um, it's nice and easy. And, and then we're gonna we'll just throw on lines and we'll secure as if we're docking. So what do you need for me? So I need you and Herm to throw lines initially. Yeah. And uh, and I'll stay on the wing station just to maintain control of it. I got it. And then uh, after we're secured, uh, if I can have, so Mike's gonna bring his crane over. And if I can have you hook, hook up the- uh, Okay, step right here. Yeah, hook that up to the crane, okay. And then, um, and then perhaps control the, got these control lines. Okay, everything's Sorry. unhooked from the deck. Yeah, everything's on your feet there. Okay. Uh, the engine's locked up. And if you can, uh, so I told Mike to lift it up. Uh, 
a foot or so. Yeah. And then you see the overhang there, he has to look up and then get it out from the overhang. And then okay. look it straight up. Oh, so you have that. Is that always there or is that just? Yeah, I just put that there just in case. Okay. There you have the plug in? Thank you. It plugs in. Yeah. Okay. Is the plug always in? No, no, I just put it in. Okay. okay. Uh, and then if you could control the lines just in case it gets a little sloppy. Yeah. And then I've got two lines, uh, this one and that one. Let's throw it to those guys on that okay. boat. Okay. So they can control it and then uh, the plan is to... So these are my lines, those are their lines. Yeah, throw it Okay. And then, um, uh, maybe if, if there's room, if you can throw it to them before they even get it off the deck. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I guess maybe you could tell Mike to put plenty of slack just in case the, yeah. there's some room. Put slack at first until sure. we're ready to go. What is this way? Uh, I think with the engine's like six. Six. So uh, it's well, it's it's a light one. This is a light, light yeah, setup. Okay. Yeah. What's yours? Uh, yeah, I think it's six. I might be cool. Well, mine's like eight hundred without the engines. We got the wind picking up a little bit here. Of course, of course it does right now. The anchor is just not coming up. But that's uh, reasonable since there was like huge waves um, recently. I'm soaking wet from that uh, big pile of mud that blew out. Spring line or stern line? Which one's first? All right, guys, we have a crazy operation going on here. Operation Dingy Down in full effect. I'm sure Brayden has recapped this, but um, our buddy boat's davit broke, similar to ours. Well, different things, but similar to ours in Puerto Rico. So our friend that has a 68 is going to lift his dinghy down for him.
everything was a total success. Um, boats are still rafted up, got on raft, go anchor. Um, this boat has the anchor alarm going on because no one turned it off. And then, uh, um, but it was uh, way less eventful than I could have ever imagined. Everything went incredibly smooth and that was because uh, Mike and Malcolm um, really thought everything through before they did it. And it worked perfectly. Hey, you got some marks right here. Malcolm will take care of those though. He'll pay for those. Some scratches on the bow. Yeah, I think that was Malcolm. I think that was Malcolm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> How's it look, Captain? <laughs> so a little different than us, uh, Malcolm chooses to let the chain free fall. His windlass is not quite as quick. Ours can be sped up if we can speed up the revolutions on the engine. Um, he doesn't have that ability, so he just free falls it, and it's actually quite quick. It's just quite slow bringing it back in. So right now they're backing down on the anchor to make sure that it's completely stuck, and uh, it doesn't look like we're moving. We're actually going forward, as you can tell, which is because they reverse so hard on the anchor that it, I know it seems odd, but it's pulling them forward now. So we're definitely stuck. You don't like the pepper or the onion? That's okay, just put it put it there. Don't delete it. Three and teriyaki chicken bowls and lots of veggies. Outside is lightning, my least favorite thing in the world. But so, Braden says it's not gonna get So us. last time we went to California, we left the dogs, the dogs here. Not here, but in Florida. And it was very inconvenient for the fact that when Leo was eating, we actually had to clean up after him. I know. Normally we don't have to do that. The dogs just take care of everything right. and everything's done. Right. And that's really gross, but it's very convenient. <laughs> Ooh, hot.